What I have here is an example of an implanted spinal cord stimulator system. We have a lead implanted and we are looking to close the thoracic incision. So I'm using V-Lock 2.0 barb suture in order to achieve this closure. And I'm going to do this in a two-layer fashion. The first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to identify the dermal layer that I'm going to be placing the suture in. And I'm going to drive this suture towards the apex of the wound. Once I have this positioned, I'm then able to drive the other side in the same manner, but I'm coming from the apex towards my original insertion. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my needle and the very back end of this suture has a small loop that allows me to place the needle within that loop and then I'm able to bring this down so that it locks nice and firm. What I'm going to do here is come back through and continue in this fashion for my deeper layer. And in doing so, you can see the wound starts to approximate. One of the big advantages here is that I do not have to pull very hard on the suture in order to achieve strength and stability, but rather just a slight tug to ensure that I'm approximating evenly across both sides. It's important to maintain equal depth as you come from each side. And in a matter of a couple of minutes, I have my first layer almost completed. Now the one very important fact to remember is that even after I have completed my run, I'm still not under the pressure to create a knot, whereas I can actually come through the tissue and actually cut the suture. And by doing so, I have a very, very secure wound that I'm applying significant amount of tension to and it's completely sealed off. The next layer is done in essentially the same manner. And what I do is I use a smaller suture, in this case a 3-0, and in the same manner I do my first loop creation and in doing so the superficial tissue here to the apex again from the apex I'm going to return back 
in the other direction. Once I've done that, the real advantage again is the fact that I have the ability to pass the needle through the loop and once again I've now been able to secure my suture down. Once I've done that, I can once again perform the same type of run that I did on the lower layer. And I'm doing my superficial run in the same manner. Now as I walk through each of these maneuvers, I want to make sure I'm paying particular attention to the approximation so that they remain equal and consistent on both sides. Again, I'm not worried at all about how much tension I'm placing on the actual incision because the locking mechanism of the suture is working in my favor. And as I start to bring this closure in, you'll start to see that the wound itself is starting to lock in position. Now again, some of the things we want to keep in mind is that you not only have strength, but you have an aesthetically pleasing wound, which I can't say enough about, and how patients perceive their surgeons sometimes just purely based on the appearance of the wound. And as we finalize this superficial layer, you'll see the technique of finishing the closure is exactly the same as the level below that we just did. And that is as we will once again pass through the skin and cut the suture, eliminating the need to tie knots. Now, as I mentioned, many of my peers find this to be their greatest struggle, and that is getting comfortable with the security of the knots that they're tying. And in this case, it's not of concern at all. So as you see, I pass through the skin again, and I simply cut. And what we have here is a very, very nice and secure wound that I can't peel apart even with pressure.